Hi guys, this is Rack and Load, and this is the FX Bobcat Bullpup Air Rifle, pre-charged air rifle from FX. And this one, you're either gonna love it or hate it, I think. Bullpup designs, yeah, they're getting fairly popular now with air rifles. Not very left hand friendly this one isn't as you know if you watch my videos you'll know that I'm a lefty so I've had to kind of battle on sort of uh, testing this gun and shooting it right handed which really isn't my uh, strongest type of shooting shooting right handed but it's been alright but a pretty cool gun I like the style of this I know some people out there will absolutely hate it <clears throat> Excuse me, you'll have to bear with me guys, I've got like a real bad throat, it's man flu setting in I reckon. So anyway, the FX Bobcat, so, well there's quite a bit to talk about here. First I'll give you the full specs then, so, the length of it is 750mm, the weight is 3.5 kilos, unscoped, so... It's average really, sort of on an average par as far as uh, air rifles are concerned. Uh, barrel length is 24 inches. And remember this is a ball pop, so the barrel starts basically there. Uh, it's a full free floating barrel as well, I'll show you. I'll give it the paper test. Just show you that that barrel is... Let's just try and do this. I'll show you that that barrel is completely free floating all the way all the way back basically so it's completely free floating barrel so that piece of paper proves that <laughs> not very scientific but it works uh, shot count you're gonna get around this is 2.2 by the way 0.22 150 shots plus um, out of this gun in uh, 0.22 little less with the uh, 177 version several calibers are available with this gun and this is where it kind of comes into its own um, you can get this in 0.25 and you can also get it in 30 cal as well uh, here in the UK that would have to be on an FAC because you can have to sort of have this thing pumping out a bit of juice to move that 30 cal pellet along or air bullet whatever you want to call it so yeah 30 cals are available on FAC or firearm certificate here in the UK but like I say this is a 2.2 version so let's crack on then with this review and uh, let's get stuck in with it so first of all let's talk about the magazines now this, notice this is a little storage uh, area in the stock before I get the mag out actually I'm sort of jumping the gun so to speak that's pretty cool little storage area for your for your magazine only pushes out the one side so you can't sort of push it all the way through so let's talk about the magazine now I'm not a great fan of these magazines to be honest nothing against clockwork magazines but this one uh I don't know, I just found it a little bit fiddly. Um, and of course, me being a typical bloke, I didn't um, read the instructions, so I just sort of cracked on and tried to load it up. And I was struggling for about 10 minutes. And I'll show you what I mean. If I just refer to the manual. Let's find the bit where it tells you about the magazines. Right. That's your instructions there. For loading the magazines now you guys that own these guns you know you you'll be able to do it second nature but they're just not not the simplest of magazines to load they're a little bit fiddly a right pain really if you're sort of out in the field and you know you've got gloves on or your fingers are numb because of the cold i don't know i just i prefer the the sort of um non-mechanical um magazines so to speak you know like the uh, the solid metal rotary magazines just try and find your picture of one in here 
those sort where you just push the pellets in, bang it in the gun, job done. That's what I prefer, but this gun uses uh, uses these magazines. I don't know, I just don't know. Not keen. Not keen. So the magazines, to be honest, not my favourite. Uh, they are very sleek, the way they're sort of constructed and everything, but I just found them a little bit fiddly. I don't know, just a bit of a pain, to be honest. In my opinion, you FX guys will no doubt love them, but I just found it, compared to other rifles that I've shot, I just found these a little bit of a pain. The magazines are 12 shot, by the way, so that's quite cool. So let's talk about this rifle then in some detail. So let's take it from the stock end as ever in a rack and load style. Now you've got a nice rubber recoil pad or butt pad there. Adjustable as well for length of pull and you can sort of move it up and down as well. Really just to get it set up for yourself. Um, so that's a, a good feature of this gun. Nothing really sort of, you know, amazing about the rubber on the uh, on the butt pad. It's just fairly sort of standard rubber. No no vents in it or anything like that. But it's cool. It does the job. And then moving along the stock now. This is what another thing that niggled me with this rifle a little bit. Me being a left-hander, they throw it in a fully ambidextrous stock. Yet, you still can't shoot at this thing left-handed because the safety's on this side, the cocking lever's on this side. You know, um, can you do that? Can you swap it out easily? I don't think you can, looking at it. Not doable. Which is a shame, really. You know, it'd be good if you could if lefties could swap, the, swap this round so it, to make it full left hand but hey ho so anyway so moving along the stock then so you'll notice this recess here like I said earlier that's where you can store your magazine just drop it in there get it on camera so you can see pushes it in and you've got like a little uh, ball thing there to sort of keep it in, stop it falling out, but you've got to give it a push to push it out from the other side. So that is quite a cool feature where you can store your magazine in the stock there. Now moving along the uh, the stock, you've got thumb hole, pistol grip stock, and really very comfortable and it's full synthetic, this stock is, but it's kind of got a sort of a rubbery feel to it, kind of. Really quite grippy and uh, good in all weathers, really. It'll offer a lot of traction. Very nice stock. And then on the other side there, you've got your gauge. which is a nice clear gauge from FX but the stock is really nice I love the stock apart from it's not left handed well the stock is left handed but just wish the rest of the gun was it'd be perfect let's just show you the Pistol grip there, really, really comfortable. With those finger grooves. And then moving along the fore end, we've got like these vented bits here, which obviously this houses the air reservoir. Moving along the fore end, it is really nice and wide. And uh, again, it's all the same material, the stock is, all the way along. It's like this real sort of grippy, it's not rubber coated, but it does feel 
sort of it's like it's got a rubbery touch to it if you know what I mean it's but it's really nice it's not sort of cheap crappy polymer or anything and then right on the end of the fore end another criticism I've got you've got this bit of a sort of flat part here I wish they could have just put either some sling swivel studs there so you could uh, bang on a uh, bipod or just chucked on a rail or moulded a rail into the polymer that would have been ideal whether they do that on the new version because I believe there is a new version of this gun coming out not sure but it would be pretty cool if they did and then it would just make it so much easier just to chuck a bipod on this gun on the other side is the plastic or polymer cheek piece really quite comfortable nice and simple does the job now the 24 inch barrel like I was saying and like I showed you earlier is totally free floating and it incorporates the uh, smooth twist that uh, FX have on quite a lot of their air guns now just makes it more pellet friendly and this barrel is obviously shrouded and it's fairly quiet as well you've got like a almost like an integral silencer I'm just unscrew this so you can look down there if you can see so that sort of deadens quite a lot of the sound you don't get the the crack out the uh, out the muzzle but the profile of the barrel does look really good with it being shrouded just uh, looks pretty tactical and it is very accurate this rifle very accurate in fact while we're talking about accuracy and the barrel I'll just show you my target now this is at 30 yards yeah I know you guys can shoot way better than me but I'll just show you my target 30 yards in my backyard using uh, RWS Super Domes 0.22 uh, 14 and a half grains I think well, that was my first group I think that was my best group as well looking at it three shots in each target not bad and you know my excuse is as well I was shooting this thing right handed and I'm a lefty so uh, that's my excuse but very accurate <coughs> accurate when I can say it you know you guys will be able to do way better than what I can do um, especially if you're right handed a right handed shooter but I'm quite happy with that being a lefty shooting this thing right handed you know but uh, very accurate rifle now on this rifle obviously ignore the scope this is just a, a test scope that I'm using uh, nothing special but you've got bags and bags of uh, dovetail scope rail on there so you've got stacks of room to bang your optic on and this uh, gun doesn't come with open sight so you will need to chuck a scope on it and it's pretty obvious you will a rifle uh, like this now to load this rifle then pretty easy once you've figured out how to load the magazines <laughs> like I was saying earlier pull the lever back this is your safety catch by the way I'll just show you that while we're sort of uh, at this end of the gun it's not a bad safety catch let's just move the cocking lever out of the way but it's not great I think it could be in a in a better place and it's not really sort of you know massive I like a nice decent safety catch myself it's not an automatic anyway which is a bonus um, but it's a bit too subtle for me I wish it was a little bit a little bit more obvious you know um, but hey ho that's your safety catch 
But then, like I was saying, to load this gun, it is a side lever. You open up the side lever like that, and just get the magazine. And you'll notice on the magazine there's like this recess here. Just get it in focus. That recess there, what you need to do is basically that recess, get it lined up with that, see that brass coloured piece there. Get that lined up with that bit and it'll just slide in like that. Obviously I've got nothing loaded in this uh, magazine but then you just put, push the breech forward, it won't go forward at the minute because there's no pellets in it. All the way forward and then you're hot, you're good to go and then every shot just crank the, uh, the lever all the way back and all the way forward for each shot. Dead simple gun to use. Now the cocking lever itself is quite nice. Um, it's right sort of up up close to you so uh, you haven't sort of got to reach for it down here like on a fairly standard sort of air rifle with this being a bullpup all the workings are sort of back here so for a right handed shooter anyway you'll soon get the feel of it and it'll be really quite comfortable I was struggling a little bit being a lefty but um, but yeah it is it is cool and it, it's a well made cocking lever as well, you know, I think you'd struggle to to break that thing. There's all the linkages there, it looks really well made. I'll just close that up. You can see there as you, I've t taken the magazine out as you close the gun, that push the pellet into the breech. And obviously it cycles the magazine each after each shot. The trigger is really nice as well. It's fully adjustable. And considering this gun is a ball pop, it's a real nice smooth trigger. Now, as ever, let's cock the gun. There's nothing in it. Let's give this trigger a pull straight out of the box. Let's see what it's pulling. Oh, look at that. One and a half pounds or just over. Straight out of the box. Absolutely sweet trigger. A pretty cool feature about this gun as well, what I like, is the fact that you can adjust the power on it. Now notice this little wheel here. That's set on setting number one. That's the lowest power that it'll shoot. So you can it's got three different settings. So you can just crank that round, so that's your lowest power, crank it round to number two, that's your medium power, and then crank it round to number three, and that's your full power then. So that's a really cool feature of this gun. I'll throw in the uh, chrono footage of that. I'm personally not that keen on where they've put the uh, filler on this gun. Um, I don't know, It's I don't think it's in a good place there myself. And to be honest, it looks vulnerable. It would have been better if that had been sort of recessed in, maybe at the fore end, you know, with a cover. So you could, you know, there's plenty of sort of fore end here to play with. It would have been nice, but I don't know whether they can do that, you know, how this gun is built, uh, I'm not sure, but that just seems a little bit vulnerable where it is, to be honest. It would have just been better in a sort of a less intrusive place, because I was sort of catching it, you know, when I was holding my hand underneath the, the stock to shoot it. Uh, I was catching it every now and again. 
don't know, but that's just me, you know, might not bother you, but it'd just be better if that was in a better place, in my opinion anyway. Now the instruction manual for the FX is, is really quite good, although it does basically cover all their guns, it's kind of a universal um, owner's manual or instruction manual, but it is really good, it's really clear, offers uh, a lot of uh, information, uh, good photographs as well, and tells you pretty much everything you need to know about loading the gun and operating the gun and maintaining the gun basically just go through it all offers all your obvious warnings and stuff and tells you how to adjust the trigger and the uh, butt pad as well but like I say this is kind of a universal uh, manual it covers pretty much all their models and then you've got at the back of it some accessories bits and pieces that you can get for your FX so it's a cool manual very good manual I'll just show you this FX brochure that I've got it is uh, an old one I haven't got the latest uh, 2015 one but this offers uh, all the different models that they do just sort of give you a quick sort of brochure flick through you know, they even do uh, guns that will fire like bolts or arrows that's pretty cool not had to play with one of them yet I'm sure I will do though but it, uh, it's got all the um, different models in there really quite cool these guns are the target versions competition versions had a lot of experience using the Verminators, that's a great little gun that is. A very, very reliable gun as well. Perfect sort of farmyard gun, that is. But yeah, there's a stack of models to choose from, from FX. So that's your rack and load review then of the FX Bobcat PCP Bullpup Air Rifle. Available in 177, 22, 0.25 and 30 cal. So a real cool rifle with uh, plenty of caliber options there. Kind of a Marmite gun though, like I say, you're either going to love it or hate it. I'm kind of in between for the sheer fact that it's not fully ambidextrous um, it'd just be cool if you could just swap out that uh, cocking lever you know after all the stock is ambidextrous it's just a shame they didn't or maybe they can't you know I expect it would be difficult to make that so you could just swap it out onto the other side but never mind great gun though I've enjoyed using it uh, pretty cool all round gun target gun uh, hunting gun you know you definitely got um, a good shot count with this gun at you know over 150 shots in 0.22 per charge and your uh, 12 shot magazines so obviously if you get one of these guns get a, one or two more magazines you know especially if you're using this thing out in the field because they are fiddly to load but anyway guys as ever thanks for watching that's rack and load see ya